Nation SI, we are in week two of the season. Dan Dick out here alongside Adam Morrison. Great season is upon us. Mo, how excited are you? Uh, super excited. I mean, it's, uh, it's the budding of the new year. Then obviously we got some high level games coming up. I The non-conference part of Gonzaga basketball is the real fun. Um, just a little bit behind March, but yeah, super excited about the games coming up. Yeah, I would, I would, I would tend to agree with you on the fact that non-conference is a lot more exciting than conference. Because, I mean, if you look at it, out of the last twenty-three years, I think Gonzaga's won twenty-one, maybe twenty-two, or of those titles. Um, but when you look at this non-conference, I mean, it gets me excited. You got to get away with kind of complaining about the occasional duds north yeah. Florida might be a dud in a lot of people's eyes but it serves the purpose of getting a real game under your belt before you go play a heck of a game uh, i had a chance to talk to coach matt driscoll of north florida before the game he was a great guy and he he kind of shared some experiences with coach few and coach monson uh from years past um, but I wasn't at the game. Mo, you were courtside. What did you see in that game? Um, you know, the 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 game started off really exciting. Um, North Florida was a three-point shooting team. Um, I, I think it was like 55% of their shots or about 60, somewhere in that uh, neighborhood that were three-point field goal attempts. So that's kind of they lived and die by the three. Um, and they made a three to go up 10-8. It was like, oh, this is going to be a fun game. And then Gonzaga went on a 26-0 run. So <laughs> then it was, um, you know, they got kind of uh, a little bit uh, stale after that. But uh, our guys played a good uh, a good game. It was nice for our guys to get out there and, and play somebody new. And um, you know how that goes when you're coming into a season, play fresh face, and then the games actually count. So um, I was excited in that regards um, for our guys to, you know, get a home and start the season off right. 26 0 run that's like uh i mean those are legendary type runs are there any kind of spurts that you remember in your playing career because i i can remember a number of like 10 0 12 0 runs where one guy gets hot in like yeah. back to back to back possessions but 26 0 is everybody's clicking defensively offensively everybody's got to have a hand in it is probably it, it might even like cross media timeouts when it's 26-0. Yeah. yeah, I think it, it happened. Um, the one that comes to mind is my freshman year we were playing San Francisco. And it was similar where it was tied in the 20s, and then we look up and it's like 55 to 25, or you know, and, and it was like a 30-0 run. And their coach who had ended up, it was, you know, small world was Jordan Matthews' dad. He took his yeah. chair and moved it away from his bench and just sat like near the scores table the rest of the half <laughs> because it was just like we couldn't miss and you know run out after run out and the, that was the old kennel so it was going nuts um but yeah those are hard to get by i think the number um jorge gave us the number for the radio broadcast i think they had 11 uh straight stops which is crazy um you know so our guys did a good job of of guarding the three-point line we knew that would be a, a you know, one of the keys to the game and they took care of business. Yeah, that's uh, 11 straight stops for anybody that's listening to this that doesn't understand how difficult that is. Practices would be if you get three stops in a row in practice, you got coaches are flying around excited, graduate assistants, managers are, are, are throwing towels because that's a big deal because that can kind of give you the ability to put on a spurt. Yeah, they call them kills. Uh, three stops is a kill, so they try to have at least, I think the number's four to six, I think is what I've I've heard or seen and, you know, on scouting reports. Um, so, yeah, they got three in a row or four in a row um, during that game. But it's hard to do because these are all Division One basketball players. But I think our length and our ability to switch out on the perimeter um, just really bothered uh, North Florida. I didn't get a chance to call the game on TV because Greg Heister and I were working for Pac-12 Network that night. Uh, I listened to you and Huddy in the second half driving home. Full disclosure, I got a speeding ticket in the Colfax area. There you um, go. <laughs> how many of those have you gotten over the years? Uh, I don't. I got a Passport XL, man. You got to get the Fuzzbuster, dude. They're legal. So, yeah, I've gotten zero. 
in the last <laughs> five years. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was crazy because Greg Eister and I are both, we're about 15, 20 minutes apart. I'm ahead of him. Mm -hmm. I get a text or I get pulled over. I'm getting a ticket. He texts me that he had just gotten pulled over before Colfax on the way home. So we both got tickets on the way home from Pullman that, that night. Uh, but I was listening to your broadcast with Huddy. Uh, it, it sounded like the guy, game got out of hand a little bit. You guys had some nice banter going on in the second half. Yeah. Uh, talking about movies. I think you were talking about uh, the how a – um charlie um, horse how yes a charlie how horse a charlie became... horse came about yeah give us a little bit about your prep for when a game gets completely out of hand and what you and how you and how do you handle it yeah so i mean obviously on the radio you have to describe and and you know it's 25 30 point blowout it's hard to get excited and it becomes you know there's obviously exciting plays but the, the level of excitement in your voice and inflection obviously dips um, so, yeah, I just – Huddy's from Houston, so the Astros get brought up a lot, and they just won. So we talked about the Astros. And then he mentioned Charlie Horse, and so then I just said, what, where does that come from? And our producer is great, and he looked it up, and then so I had to explain it after the next break. Um, but, yeah, like, it, it's easier on TV. I mean, you understand this. Like, even if a game's a blowout, you can kind of just let the game flow. But, I mean, when it's a 30-point blowout, I personally – I try to think if I'm listening in the car – I probably tra change the dial. So like at least have something funny or like talk about <laughs> something else. To, um, and, you know, we try to do that a little bit. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. I enjoyed it because I think if I remember correctly, you even Googled or Wikipedia how a charm yeah. horse came about. I had never known. I mean, that, yeah, that, was, that was knowledge. That was awesome for me. Yeah, no, it, it, it comes from a, a, a white Sox baseball player who played in the late 1800s when the league first started. And it refers to a horse he named, that was named Charlie that, that was lame. So when you get a Charlie horse, you're lame. And then, so then I, I just was interested to see how that would uh, translate for over a hundred years. It's like, you know what I'm saying? And that, that yeah. was the biggest thing for me. It's like, how is this stuck around for a hundred years? And when you say it, my kids know what it means. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Everybody knows what the Charlie horse is. And you're like, what? So yeah, that's what that's we do awesome. when there's a blowout. And there's a lot of blowouts. Awesome. Well, you know, anytime there's a difference in my calendar with broadcasting and I get a chance to listen, I'm, I'm going to keep an ear out for any of those little anecdotes because that was great. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move to the, the Michigan State game. That, to me, must have been an experience of a lifetime. You've played in big time games, high school, college, NBA. Um, you know, you've gotten into the broadcasting world. You do a great job. But this was different because mm -hmm. you get the United States military involved. You're on an aircraft carrier. Most people in the course of their life never step foot on one of those uh, to see it, to tour it, let alone to work on it and see a college basketball game. Give me your overall view of ex of what that night was like. Well, so first off, um, you know, when you get to the base, you know, you go through all the security stuff and then leading up to it, I mean – we filled out, you know, you know, numerous forms of paperwork. So like for everybody on staff, uh, you know, support staff at Gonzaga, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> and I say that because when we got there, it's as smooth as can be. And it's not one of those deals where it was to support the troops. I'm going to say it was awesome just because it was cool. Like for real, like uh, the, you got in quick, they got everybody through. They had a nice little food court area for all the fans because there was only 2,500 people there, uh, not counting. Um, you know, like servicemen and women. So there's probably a thousand Michigan State and Gonzaga fans total. So they got to kind of congregate together, which I thought was neat. Um, and then just walking up to the thing, it's it's really, it, you know, you see them from afar, but when you're next to them, it's really fascinating how big they are. I know it sounds cliche, but like the, the size of them. Um, and then you get on deck, it takes you, I mean, I think it's like nine flights of stairs just to get up top. And then it's three football fields long. I mean, it's it's insane how big they are. Um, but I was really impressed with just how, like, the security was there, but it wasn't, like, uh, over the top where you you felt like you couldn't do anything. So you just kind of walk around the whole deck. It was cool. You know what I mean? Like, kind of laid back, like, hey, we're playing a basketball game. You're obviously cleared to be here. Have fun. You know what I'm saying? So the the pregame stuff was fantastic they did a um flyover with two helicopters and playing with the national anthem that was really cool obviously 
Um, and then when the game started, it was a, um, you know, a decent game from a, a viewing standpoint. I, I knew that though, like, to be honest, and it's not trying to be Monday morning uh, quarterback or Mr. Obvious, but like, you know, if we're going talking about an over and under, like anybody who was smart would hammer that under, you know what I'm saying? Because just yeah. playing outside with the, the wind, with the, the cold, um, you know, it was a well-fought game, but it, there was a lot of air balls and bricks and stuff like that you normally wouldn't see. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a great experience, like really cool to be a part Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm jealous that you got to to be a part of that game, calling it as a, as a broadcaster, because uh, that would – if you list out a number of games that you want to want to be a part of, if they gave you a list – that would be towards the top of the list, obviously final fours, title games, things like that. But, you know, the uniqueness to that would have been awesome. I do know because, you know, I've talked with the the head of college basketball broadcasting of ESPN a number of times, David Seisler. He mentioned to me over the summer when we chatted that Coach Few asked to land on the deck before the game started there was no way that would have been possible because the, the court took up literally the whole deck, yeah. right? No, not the whole deck, but it would have been challenging. Um, it, like it's three football fields long, so there's plenty of space, but you have the locker rooms on one side, you know, porter potties, concessions. So there would have been enough room to land. A helicopter would have been the only, the only way or yeah. one of those, those, you know, jets and that drop down. But you've got to remember we are operating – on taxpayer dollars so let's not <laughs> waste the gas yeah so tell that to coach, coach few right and he'll just here. give you that side look and be like what yeah oh, no yeah no it it uh they said the total cost of the carrier was 8.5 billion um so yeah like it's just it's just the whole thing is fascinating just being a part of it um and seeing how those things operate and then seeing all the service men and women like most of them are like 18 to 22 it's just wild to think like you know, when we were kids, we we're just gym rat and these, you know, these kids are going out for like 200 plus days and in charge of a multi-billion dollar machine. You know what I mean? Part of the yeah. inner work used to make this thing run. So it was, it's fascinating. Uh, it was a great experience. Obviously it was cool. Gonzaga won. And, you know, I'm just curious if they'll ever do a carrier game again. Um, Cause it's a lot that goes into it, breaking the court down. And cause it's not like you just, you know, drive up to the, to the you yeah. know and get it yeah. off you gotta go down an elevator yeah. and all this crazy stuff and then you know there's a lot of clearances that need to be made rightfully so and blah 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 so i'm glad that i was a part of it yeah no that, that's awesome i appreciate uh the insight um did you wear top gun top gun uh ray-ban sunglasses or did you I, I, did, those? I didn't wear aviators but i had the jacket on and thank god that i had the foresight to do that because it was i i thought it felt like 50 with the wind chill it was probably 55 with, with the wind chill but it yeah. was literally legitimately cold and so that's why i think in the future like if they do one of those games it needs to be at like 1 p.m but right it's everybody's going for a time slot so you know what i'm saying so like i understand um espn scheduling it that way um but yeah it was legitimately cold Awesome. Well, Mo, uh, awesome to hear your ex experiences there. Um, looking forward to hearing more in the coming episodes about Texas, Kentucky, and the rest of this unbelievable non-conference before we get into, uh, I don't want to say a boring WCC, but many times it kind of becomes the dog days of the college basketball season. So look forward to chatting again very soon, Mo.